Welcome to Learn This Game, where you can learn about board games and how they are played. Today, we'll be looking at the blood of an Englishman. In this video, there'll be a general description and overview of the game. We'll inventory the components, and we'll go through gameplay, including setup, a complete playthrough, and victory conditions. In the description, there'll be some helpful links. There is also a timestamp index so you can navigate directly to any part of the presentation. If you want to skip this introduction and go straight to the setup and gameplay, you can go to the timestamp index now in the description. And if you find this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. You can also leave a comment to share your experience with the game or let us know what game you'd like to see reviewed. The Blood of an Englishman was published by Renegade Game Studios in 2016 and designed by Dan Kassar. In this two player card game based on the story of Jack and the Beanstalk, the giant is trying to capture Jack before he steals the giant's treasures. The age recommendation is 10 and older. The difficulty level is low, and each game averages about 30 minutes to play. The game is designed for two players only, and it is a competitive game. There is no solo variant provided. An app is not required, and there are no standalone apps. Now that you've seen a brief introduction to the game, let's get into the game itself. This is a card-driven asymmetrical strategy game for two players. No dice or components are used. Asymmetrical refers to the fact that each player has different movement rules and winning conditions. Thematically, the game is based upon the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. Now let's see how to win the game. This is an asymmetrical card game, so Jack and the Giant have different movement rules and victory conditions. During play, there will be five stacks of cards known as castle stacks. In order for Jack to win, he must remove cards from the castle stacks and build three beanstalks that contain six beanstalk cards each, and each one of the three different treasure cards. The beanstalks are built one at a time, ending with a unique treasure. One beanstalk must be completed before the next one can be started. The beanstalk cards must be in ascending, sequential order, but do not have to be consecutive numbers. The giant has three ways to win immediately. The giant can win vertically if each of four different giant cards is adjacent in a single unbroken group within a single castle stack and anywhere within that stack. These cards are labeled Fee, Fi, Fo, and Fum. The order of the cards is not important, but there can be no duplicate cards within the group of four. The giant can also win horizontally if each of the four different giant cards is placed at the front of four of the five castle stacks. Order and adjacency are not important. The giant can also win immediately if he is able to discard enough cards to prevent Jack from completing his three beanstalks. Now let's review the components. This game comes with one eight-page color fold-out rulebook, four helper cards summarizing the moves and win conditions for both Jack and the Giant, 36 beanstalk cards numbered one through nine with four copies each, eight giant cards labeled Fee, Fi, Fo, and Fum with two copies each, and six treasure cards with two copies of each treasure. Now let's set up the game for the playthrough. Each player should have one copy each of the Jack and Giant helper cards. Next, we shuffle all 50 cards, which include the Beanstalk, Treasure, and Giant cards. We deal cards face up to form five castle stacks of 10 cards each. Cards should be fanned down so that each card partially covers the card beneath it to allow the titles of all cards in play to be seen by both players. There are no hidden cards in the game. The first card dealt in each stack is referred to as the back card of the castle stack, and the topmost card is known as the front of the castle stack. That completes the setup. Now let's see how the game is played. We'll do a complete playthrough until either Jack or the Giant wins. Before the first turn only, Jack gets to move a single card from anywhere to anywhere right before the start of play. In order to prevent the Giant from having four Giant cards in front of the castle stacks, Jack moves the giant's foe card from castle stack number 4 to the back of castle stack number 3. Jack always takes the first turn and play alternates thereafter. Jack's helper card lists his movement options and winning objectives. Jack gets to make three moves each turn. He can move a card from front to front between two castle stacks, or back to front within the same stack, or he can move a back or front card to a beanstalk. He can never move a card from front to back. Because there are some lower value cards in the front of some of the castle stacks, Jack decides to use all three moves to move three cards to start his first beanstalk. 
First, he'll move the Beanstalk card with a value of 1 to form his first Beanstalk. The Beanstalk 2 card is now the front card in Castle Stack 3, so he'll spend his second move moving this one to the Beanstalk. Recall that Jack cannot start another Beanstalk until he has completed the current Beanstalk. Also recall the Beanstalk must have 6 cards in ascending numerical order topped off with one unique treasure card. The numbers do not have to be consecutive. The lower the numbers you start with, the more options you should have in the castle stacks. Jack uses his last move to move the Beanstalk 4 card to his Beanstalk. Again, keeping in mind the numbers do not have to be consecutive. Jack now has the first three of six required cards to complete his Beanstalk and then steal a treasure. Next, the giant takes his turn. The giant's movement and winning objectives are different than Jack's. The giant is not as nimble as Jack, so can only choose one of the following options listed on the giant's helper card. The giant can move four vertically adjacent frontmost cards of any one castle stack to the front of any other castle stack, or move two cards individually front to front, or discard any one beanstalk card anywhere in the castle stacks. It must be a beanstalk card and not a treasure or giant card. The giant decides to discard the front card in the third castle stack. This eliminates the card from the game so Jack cannot use it to help build a beanstalk, and it also reveals a giant phi card so it is now at the front of the stack. It is now Jack's turn again. Jack will use his three moves to do the following. Move the front card of castle stack 1 to the front of castle stack 2. Then use move 2 to place the beanstalk 5 card to the top of Jack's beanstalk. Then use move 3 to move the back card of Castle Stack 2 to the top of Jack's Beanstalk. Jack now has 5 of the 6 cards necessary to complete the Beanstalk before adding a treasure. Jack can later complete this Beanstalk with a card value of 7, 8, or 9. The Giant then discards the front card of the first Castle Stack in order to reveal the Giant Fum card. Recall that the Giant can immediately win if he can move 4 unique Giant cards to the front of 4 Castle Stacks. Jack uses his first move to move the back card of stack 5 to his beanstalk. Jack now has 6 cards in ascending numerical order, so he can now place a treasure on the beanstalk. Jack then uses his second move to place the harp treasure on the top of his beanstalk. This completes the acquisition of the first treasure. Jack can now start a second beanstalk but cannot steal another harp. Each beanstalk must contain a unique treasure. Jack uses his final move to start a new beanstalk by removing the front card of the fifth castle stack. The giant uses his one move to move the front four cards of castle stack 2 to the front of castle stack 5. This brings the giant fee card closer to the front of the stack. Jack then uses his first turn to move the back of castle stack 1 to the front of the stack. This blocks the giant card and makes available the next two beanstalk cards of 2 and 3 in the back. Jack will then use his second and third moves to place these two cards on his current beanstalk. The giant then takes his turn to discard the front card in castle stack 2 in order to reveal a giant card in the front. Jack will then make the following three moves to complete his current beanstalk. Jack will take the front beanstalk 4 card to place on his beanstalk. Then he'll take the front Beanstalk 6 card and move it to his Beanstalk. And finally, Jack will take the back Beanstalk 7 card and move it to his Beanstalk. This Beanstalk now has 6 cards, so in a future turn, Jack now has to steal the Goose or Gold Treasure to finish this stack. Jack cannot start the third Beanstalk until he does this. It is now the Giant's turn. In order to bring the Giant Foe card closer to the front of the 5th Castle stack, the giant moves the front four cards from castle stack 5 to castle stack 4. Jack then uses his first move to move the back treasure card in castle stack 1 to the top of his second beanstalk. Jack can now start his third beanstalk. Jack uses his second and third moves to obtain the front beanstalk cards of castle stacks 5 and 6 to start his third beanstalk. Jack now has to acquire four more Beanstalk cards and the Goose Treasure to win the game. However, it is now the Giant's turn, and the Giant sees an opportunity to win the game. 
The giant moves the front of castle stack 1 to the front of castle stack 4. The giant now has the giant cards fee fi foe and foam at the front of 4 castle stacks, giving him an immediate horizontal win. The giant cards do not have to be in order. Let's review the winning and losing conditions of the game. In this playthrough, the giant won a horizontal victory. The giant also could have won a vertical victory by forming a group of four adjacent giant cards anywhere in a single castle stack. The order of the cards does not matter, but there cannot be any duplicate card. The giant can also win by discarding enough cards to prevent Jack from completing his beanstalks. Jack came very close to winning. If he had acquired just four more beanstalk cards and the goose treasure card, Jack would have won the game by stealing all three treasures. This concludes this review of The Blood of an Englishman. Visit us at these sites and don't forget to leave a comment to share your experience with the game, or to let us know what games you'd like to see reviewed. And if you'd like to experience something more exciting than stealing treasures from a bloodthirsty giant, somehow living in the clouds, stick around for our disclaimer, coming up next.